Summary of the Go-Between by L. P. Hartley When Leo Colston, now in his 60s, is going through his old school things, he comes across the journal that he kept as a child during the time that he spent a formative summer at the Brandham Hall estate in Norfolk. The diary dates back to when Leo was 12 years old. Leo realizes that he is getting older and thinks that now is the time to face the memories he has been trying to forget for so long. These are memories of things that have ruined any chance he ever had at an emotional life. In the year 1900, Leo is a young schoolboy who is both naive and interested. He is crazy about the Zodiac and thinks he has magical powers because he recently beat bullies at his school with a magic trick. Marcus, one of Leo's school friends, respects him more now that he knows he can do magic. He asks Leo to spend the summer at his aristocratic house in Norfolk. Leo agrees, but he is nervous because he lives a simple life at home and isn't used to the high-class world that Marcus' family, the Maudsleys, and Brandham Hall represent. Leo's mother raises him all by herself. She will miss him, but she says he has to go. In July, Leo moves into the luxurious Brandham Hall. He is quickly taken by the people who live there and the way they live. He can go anywhere on the property, and in an old outhouse he finds a huge deadly nightshade, a highly deadly plant that witches use to make potions. Marcus shows Leo a thermometer in one of the other abandoned houses. From then on, Leo checks the weather almost every day. Leo really likes Marion, Marcus's beautiful older sister. She offers to take him to Norwich, which is close by, and help him buy clothes that are better for the very hot weather. On their day trip, Leo quickly falls in love with Marion. She buys him a green suit that makes him feel a bit like Robin Hood, with his maid Marion. While in Norwich, Marion asks Leo to go to the church to pass some time. Just before they meet up to go home, Leo sees her saying goodbye to a man she doesn't know. Even though Leo isn't old enough to swim yet, he goes with some of the other people who live in the hall to a nearby pond to take a bath. As the group comes, they see Ted Burgess, a close tenant farmer on the estate, already in the water. He is a big, strong man. Dennis, Marcus's stupid older brother, has a short chat with Ted in which he tells him that the landowner, Lord Trimingham, will come to the farm later that night. Leo is amazed by how strong Ted is, but Marion doesn't pay him any mind. Sunday morning at breakfast, Leo meets Trimingham. Trimingham just got back from fighting in the Boer War, where he hurt half of his face in a way that doesn't look good. Leo goes back to his room after breakfast to get his prayer book for church. There, Marcus tells him that he has signs of measles and won't be able to go to the service. He may even miss the upcoming cricket match and ball, which are rare times when people from the hall and the poorer locals get together. Leo goes to church with the other guests, and then he and Trimingham walk home together. Leo finds out that Trimingham is a Viscount, which makes him value him more. In turn, Trimingham asks Leo to tell Marion that she left her prayer book in church, which sets up Leo's role as a messenger. Later, Trimingham gives Leo the name Mercury, which is the name of the god who brings news to the gods. Leo loves the idea and puts Ted, Trimingham, and Marion on the Zodiac as the Waterbearer, the Archer, and the Virgin, respectively. Marcus has been put in lockdown, so Leo gets his own room. He is happy to be on his own, so he wanders around the land and ends up on Ted Burge's farm. He slips and falls down a big pile of straw, hurting his knee in the process. Ted takes Leo into the barn to treat his wound when he finds out that Leo is from the hall. As a way of saying thanks, Leo agrees to give Marion a note from Ted, which Ted says must be done in secret. Marion is happy to get Ted's message, and she says again that if Leo tells anyone, they'll all be in a lot of trouble. The weather keeps getting hotter, which makes Leo happy. One day, Trimingham tells Leo to find Marion so she can play croquet with the group. She doesn't want to play when Leo finds her, but she does give him a letter about business matters to give to Ted. Over the next few days, Leo continues to pass notes and texts between Marion and Ted, which helps them keep their relationship a secret. Marcus starts to feel better, 
and Leo worries that he won't be able to take any more texts without Marcus finding out. Marion gives Leo another letter, but Trimingham comes in and makes her hurry. As Leo walks to the farm, he opens the package and looks inside. He is shocked to find a love letter. Leo gives Ted the letter, but he tells him he can't take any more. Ted wants Leo to keep taking them because if he doesn't, Marion will be upset. Leo asks Ted about spooning, which is slang for having sex, and Ted says he'll tell him more if Leo keeps bringing the two together. The day of the cricket game comes, and Leo, who was put on the hall team because another player got hurt, gets out Ted, who is the best batter on the village team. After that, Ted and Leo sing songs in the town hall while Marion plays the piano. Leo's is a star performance and he enjoys the praise both during the cricket game and at the party afterward. On the way home, Marcus tells Leo that Marion is now engaged to Trimingham. Leo thinks that this must mean that Ted and Marion will no longer be writing to each other. Leo asks Trimingham about the Viscounts who came before him after the next Sunday church service. Leo finds out that the fifth was killed in a fight over a woman, but Trimingham tells him that nothing is ever a lady's fault. The next day, Marion gives Leo another letter for Ted, which surprises Leo. Because he wants to be faithful to Trimingham, he tells Marion that he can't take it for her. She gets angry and calls him spoiled. Leo grabs the letter and runs to the farm while crying. When Leo comes, Ted is cleaning the inside of his gun while looking down the barrel. Ted sees that Leo has been crying and thinks it's because of Marion. Ted is able to make Leo feel better, but he gets annoyed when Leo keeps asking him questions about love, marriage, and spooning. Ted stands up and looks scary, which makes Leo run back to the hall. Leo writes to his mother and asks her to call him home, but he doesn't say why. He thinks that if he leaves Brandham Hall, Ted and Marion will stop seeing each other. Trimingham asks Leo to find Marion for him. But Leo heard from Marcus that Marion is at the house of her grandmother, Nanny Robson. Trimingham tells everyone by mistake that Mrs. Maudsley is sick. Leo spends some time with Marcus. During this time, Marcus tells Leo that his mother is nervous because she thinks Marion might not follow through on her promise to marry Trimingham. He also tells Leo that Marion bought him a green bike for his birthday, which is coming up soon. Marcus's jokes make Leo understand that the color green means he is young and not very smart. Leo is angry, so he brags that he knows where Marion is. They go to one of the outhouses, where they hear two people talking. Leo stops them from finding out who they are by saying he's bored. Marion goes to London, and Leo has a few days to himself. Trimingham tells Leo that Ted might join the army and go fight in the Boer War. Leo finds out about this in the men's smoking room, which is a secret place. Leo goes to see Ted to say goodbye because he thinks he will be leaving soon. Leo offers to take one last message for Ted as a way to say goodbye. When Leo gets back to the hall, he finds a letter from telling him to stay at Brandham Hall until the end. It would be rude to leave early, the letter says. When Leo sees Marion again, he makes a big change to Ted's message. He tells Marion that Ted wants to meet on Friday, the day of Leo's birthday party, at 6 p.m. M., but Ted actually said 6.30. He tells Marion that Ted is going to war, which makes her very sad. Leo asks her why she can't just get married to Ted, but she says she can't. Leo sneaks out late one night and pulls up the deadly nightshade. He wants to use some of it in a spell to make Ted and Marion split up. The day of Leo's birthday comes, and for once, it's cloudy. Marion pulls Leo away to give him a letter, but Mrs. Maudsley, who doesn't trust Leo, stops her. Marion is adamant that the letter is for Nanny Robson to let her know that she will be coming to see her in the afternoon. The guests meet in the late afternoon to celebrate the birthday, but Marion is nowhere to be found. When a carriage for Marion comes back from Nanny Robson's with the news that she hasn't been there at all, Mrs. Maudsley drags Leo out to look for her. They get to the outhouse where the deadly nightshade used to be in the heavy rain. They find the bodies of Ted and Marion wrapped around each other, which makes Mrs. Maudsley scream. 
After that, Ted kills himself with his gun. The story goes back to old Leo, who goes back to Norfolk to see what happened to the people involved. Leo meets Marion's grandson, the 11th Viscount, who sets up a meeting between Leo and Marion. He finds out from her that Marcus died in the First World War and that Trimingham married Marion, even though he knew she was having an affair, and raised her child with Ted as his own, but he died ten years later. Like Leo, Mrs. Maudsley never really got over what had happened. Marion tells Leo that her grandson thinks he is cursed because of what happened at Brandham Hall. She asks Leo to tell her grandson that her and Ted's love was pure and beautiful. He doesn't want to do this last job as a go-between, but he does it anyway. He goes toward Brandham Hall, feeling like a foreigner in the world of emotions. About the author. Leslie Poles Hartley was born to Bessie and Harry Hartley, a solicitor and judge. In 1915, Hartley went to Oxford University to study modern history. There, he met Aldous Huxley, a writer and philosopher. Hartley was forced to join the army during World War I, but he was never sent to battle because of his health. After the war, Hartley went back to Oxford and hung out with other writers. After that, he worked as a book reviewer. British author J.B. Priestley once called him the best fiction reviewer in the country. However, he was upset that his own writing wasn't getting anywhere. Hartley's first book, The Shrimp and the Anemone, didn't come out until 1944. Hartley wrote more books, and in 1953, his book The Go-Between won the prestigious Heinemann Award. Three years later, he was named Commander of the British Empire, which was a symbolic award. Hartley was out and about a lot during his life, but he didn't get close to many people. Virginia Woolf once called him a dull fat man. Though homosexuality wasn't allowed in Britain until 1967, he kept his sexuality a secret until late in life. Hartley died at the age of 76 in London in 1972. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.